All right, today we're uh, working with John, and he is showing us how to do a porting and, uh, well, not polishing, but a porting job on his heads for his upcoming build on his uh, LS swap for his blazer. So uh, we're going to walk through a few things with John and uh, see exactly what we're doing and why we are doing it. All right, so we have here are the heads from the LS, and these are OE heads. Is that correct, John? Yes, they're OE heads. They're the L59. Uh, or the Z-VIN uh, L5953. It also fits the 4.8 liters. All right. And one of the first things that you probably notice here are the Sharpie lines here, John. Tell us about the Sharpie lines and why they're there. Well, they're there as a guide, uh, basically so we can tell how much we need to port the exhaust to have a true gasket match. So what we did is we took the exhaust manifold gasket and bolted in place and then drew the sharpie line around there so we know exactly where to stop so we don't overport. All right, so uh, overporting. Now, speaking of overporting, how do you know where to stop where you've gotten too far so that you don't start infringing on, well, the combustion side or the exhaust side or what have you? Well, you're not really too much concerned about the combustion side, more for the oiling system and cooling passages. Um, these 5.3s do give you extra room on the uh, outer side of the head. The inner side of the head, there is not much room because then you will start getting into the oil galleys um, and uh, you start running into some of the coolant passages that run through here. So they give you enough room in this area here so you can do small modifications like this. Now on these heads here, uh, you're uh, valve runs through the side and you can actually see inside where it starts to to kind of make a little bit of an oval uh, where that valve comes down so we gotta make sure we don't get too far in deeper uh, to where it won't go into the actual head where the lifter goes down so I'm looking at the grind here and would you say that about an inch is about as far in as you want to go? Yes, because we're doing a home port and polish um, where you go into with the CNC machines you can get a lot more precise. I wouldn't recommend going beyond an inch, uh, maybe an inch and a quarter uh, just for the sake that we don't know exactly where we are how deep we can actually go. So what you're saying then is, is if you were getting this professionally done they would go in as deep as they could because they have the CNC machine but if you're doing this at home on your own bench you need to only go in about an inch. Yes. All right. And don't go oversized. You don't want to go much more than than what I have here which is a true gasket match. All right now let's compare what we have done here with the originals. All right, so what we have here is the original way that it's done, and we're already marked with the sharp, all right? Now, John, tell us more about what's going on here. Okay, so you can see right here from these marks how much room we're actually gonna be shaving off of the head. So you, we're shaving just a little bit off the sides and a whole bunch off the top and bottom. Uh, so basically what we're doing is we're taking it from that small port to that extra large to help with that flow. Now what GM did uh, was they used the same size from the actual valve itself and actually started to make it smaller to come into the exhaust. So what we're doing is we're actually going to be shaving all this down so that way we have the same size all the way down to the valve. All right, so now we're talking about the exhaust side here. Is there anything that we're doing uh, or that you intend to do to the intake side? No, and the reason why is GM has made this the most air flowing as it can without disrupting any oil passages or cooling passages. All right, so we're gonna be just simply messing with the outside. It allows that lung to plenty of intake, but we're giving this a little bit more room for that air to flow because well, oxygen burns. Yes, and, and with GM, they already basically have a gasket match on the intake. For one, it's already an oval port. Um, it's elongated, so you really don't want to mess too much with the intake unless you're doing a, a custom intake from a Holly or somebody like that. Uh, then you can go in and modify, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would have that professionally uh, machined. Okay, now here's what we did on the intake. As you can see where there's a little bit of Sharpie markers along the sides uh, or the top and the bottoms, 
There's not a whole lot on the side. Uh, that's because they are pretty much already gasket matched. You can see there's a couple little corners, but in all reality, that is not going to make enough of a difference for our application to worry about porting the intake. One thing I would like to note is when we did send this off to be machined, uh, he didn't mill the intake side or the exhaust side. What he did was he basically took a, a emery cloth or a uh, sanding cookie and just kind of cleaned up the edges um, to, to help that gasket seat a little bit better. You could still see some of the exhaust outline or the intake gasket line. Uh, so this wasn't true machined flush. Uh, he just took a, a sander and basically smooth sanded it. All right, since we're talking about the heads, might as well cover the combustion side of the motor. And I'd like to point something out that I just realized, that the um, uh, you got a little bit of extra compression here because this falls flat against the, uh, well, the, if you imagine there's an invisible cylinder wall here, there's some flat space for that, uh, the upstroke of the cylinder. So you're getting a little bit more compression. Tell us more about what's going on here on the uh, combustion side, John. Well, on a combustion side, you can actually just barely see the outline of the gasket. So that actually comes up all the way around here, and it comes around. So that's a, a very flat surface to help increase the combustion. You're actually changing your compression ratio uh, with the less room you have here. Um, now, one thing that uh, on, on these particular motors, they're only a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio because the stroke is not very long. Uh, so they were able to machine this to give you optimum performance uh, from factory, uh, but still have a lower compression motor. Good deal. Uh, do you know the um, valve sizes are these OE valve sizes? They're OE valve sizes. Uh, I know the intake is uh, 188s. Fair enough, fair enough. Anything else you want to note here on the combustion side? Um, yeah, you can actually see from the machining process, or, or, or what our machine shop does, is you can see it's a little bit of glue here, or a little bit of, uh, it's actually a, a valve grinding compound. So when he puts new valve seats in, uh, it's, uh, he takes like a little plunger and forces it up and down and kind of rotates it in that valve compound to help seat those valves. So you don't have to worry about any kind of, of combustion loss or any kind of leakage when it's in the full combustion. John, you want to tell us um, what's going on here on the uh, top end? Sure. Well, what we did, uh, well, the machine shop did it. You can do this at home. Um, these are actually LS6 springs, uh, which is the uh, 6 liter out of the Corvettes and the uh, Cadillac CTSVs. Uh, so they're upgraded springs. They got a higher pressure rating. Uh, it takes more pressure to push these down. Um, they're uh, designed for this particular cam and it came as a kit with the upgraded uh, lock tabs. Uh, so all this is new, uh, but these are designed for higher performance applications. Um, so that's why they're blue instead of black to let us know that they are the upgrades for the LS6. Good deal. And you got a whole new set of valve seats and all that kind of good stuff? When, yes, uh... all new valve spring, uh, valve stem seals. Uh, all brand new. Um, this actually did come in a kit from Summit uh, with their, their cam kit. Uh, so it is the, the upgrades. Uh, it does have a little bit better sealing on the valve stem seals uh, designed for a little bit more performance. Good deal. And we'll get you those part numbers here on the video itself if you're doing this at home. So basically these are upgrades because you got an upgraded cam which we're going to hold off on the specs on that until we're ready to install. All right, so let's take a look and see what's involved with the grinding process. All right, so here in a few moments, John's going to give you a demonstration uh, and actually port one of these, uh, uh, well, exhaust sides. And uh, he's going to show you how to do it, but he's going to explain exactly what he's doing and why he's doing it. Okay, so basically, uh, we got an angle grinder. Uh, this is a, a burr bit designed specifically for aluminum. Um, there's uh, two different style burr bits. Uh, one for aluminum, one for steel, uh, but these are aluminum heads, so we're going with the aluminum burr bit. Um, this is a Mac tool uh, burr bit. Um, I prefer the uh, ones off the tool truck um, because they're a little bit more aggressive, but they last longer because they are a carbide bit. Uh, so uh, you can use a 90, a straight, whatever you like. 
Uh, you can also get these uh, aluminum burr bits uh, online. All right, so after you get done cutting off with, and, and this can be pretty aggressive, uh, when you get done with this uh, side, what are you switching to? Okay, then we're going to just a standard Dremel tool. Uh, this is a small cone uh, sanding uh, wheel. That way we can get in there and give that final polish. Uh, the burr bits do jump around quite a bit, which you'll see, uh, but this will help take some of those grooves out and help give it a final polish. Go ahead. Okay, so we're going to start the, the burring process. Uh, now, keep in mind, this does throw a lot of metal, a lot of aluminum around. So remember, wear safety glasses, wear uh, the hand gloves and protection. I've been doing this long enough. My hands are pretty much uh, mechanics hands. So, uh, but do wear safety gloves, safety glasses. process of doing a home port and we're just uh, going to go in and just do a little bit fine fine tuning on this uh, so just remember those burr bits eat up a lot of material so keep that in mind look at all them shavings it's everywhere it's like dandruff but out of aluminum <laughs>